Today we're going to be putting on the DBO 500 clutch kit from Dalton Industries. I emailed these guys a while back and uh, they were really great. Customer service is excellent. I, I, I was confused about what to put on. The kit comes with a primary spring, a new secondary spring, and a little spacer. I actually emailed them to see if I could just buy the primary spring because I'm using the stock tires on the Outlander 500 and uh, I just want to pick up the loss in that lag at the startup off the line um, where there's really no torque coming off the bike. It's, it seems to bog before it starts to rip in. So I wanted to make sure I was ordering the right thing. He told me not to get the primary spring. He said to order the whole kit, install the secondary spring, and keep the stock primary spring, and just use the little space that comes with the kit. And he said, and I quote, it will bring the little 500 back to life. So I'm literally looking forward to trying this out. Pull the key out of ignition to start with. Nice. Here's the cover. Careful with this, it is under tension. I'm gonna pull this bolt out, making sure I don't lose any parts. Never had one of these apart, so. Beauty. So that's your, uh, that's the factory spring. I just want to put this spacer in here and then put it all back together. So I'm just going to set this aside now. Be careful not to let it fall apart. Now this, to uh, remove this one, do not pull this piece apart. I'm going to actually loosen the belt by putting a screw here. This is, uh, this is one I made because you need to have the extra length. So I just bought a piece of threaded rod and uh, welded a nut to the end of it so that it wouldn't slip. And then that'll allow me to loosen off the secondary clutch. There we go. The belt can come off. When you're reinstalling the belt, you got to pay attention to the direction of travel on the belt. See rotation? It's going to go forward to the front of the bike. So that looks in good shape. So I'm going to set that aside. It'll pop off the secondary. careful it's really under a lot of tension pull the secondary bolt off and washer look at that spring and that's the secondary off the bike and there's a new spring it's a lot shorter goes into the helix like that Nothing fancy about that one. This might take some finessing. Just want to make sure that helix is lined up with the holes in the thing. So I'm going to put that cog to the top, leaving the open cavity to the top here. I don't want to crank this down very tight because I want to make sure that that's, that helix is lined up in the back. And the way that you test that is we're going to go back to my little 
spreader bolt. And they say if it spreads the actual clutch parts, then you're good to go. So open that clutch up. We'll put the primary, we'll put the belt back in. Direction to travel, like so. It goes there. Careful not to get any grease on the clutch parts. That's going to be important. Okay, belt's on. We're going to put the spacer in the in the recess there on the clutch. Take my assembled clutch primary with the spring. Line that all up. Push it in. Spreader bolt. Rotate the secondary clutch to the belt that comes up to the top. Like that. Okay, next I'm going to torque down the bolts. Do not use your impact on to, to, to retighten these things. You, I don't really notice, but the the actual bolts have very little threads on, they're coarse. If you use an impact gun and strip those threads, those clutches could fly off and believe me, that little plastic cover is not gonna save your leg. So the primary is 74 foot-pounds torque, torque and the secondary is 44 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, I've got a pretty old torque wrench, but because it's uh, analog, you can't go wrong. Now I'm going to fire it up in neutral, keep any, all your body parts away from the spinning objects. I just want to make sure that the clutch is spinning freely, nothing's wobbling or flying apart, that type of thing. Brake on, fire it up. thing back together. Okay the gasket's all cleaned up. Gonna put it push it into place. Just pay attention to that little bump there that tells you what uh, corner goes in there and just make sure your gasket is matching up the whole way along. If you notice that it's cracked some of the older Can-Ams if you notice it's cracked or splitting or split make sure you replace it. It's fairly inexpensive to replace and Helps keep water and mud out of the CVT, and that's the last thing you want in there. Okay, it's in place. Let's pop this thing on. Make sure that gasket, just feel around, make sure the gasket's in place. Tighten all 13 of these case bolts. 
Again, I'm not using an impact. I'm hand tightening these. Done.